This is a brief overview of the WebEx wireless phone series. So on the left is the 840 and on the right is the 860. The 840 is 4 inches of Gorilla Glass touchscreen and the 860 is 5.2 inches of Gorilla Glass touchscreen. The 840 is IP65 ruggedized, which is water and dust resistant. And the 860 on the right is IP68, which is ruggedized, waterproof, and dustproof. So let's look at some of the buttons on these devices. So on the right here, you can see that it has a 3.5 millimeter jack at the top, and it also has a programmable button that is by default the emergency button so I can push this and by default it'll trigger uh, the alarm but you can configure that to be anything you want on the right is the power button and then this here is the push to talk button so when I trigger this it'll generate a push to talk the ability to communicate with other nodes using push to talk over here we have several buttons. This is the volume up, volume down, and this is an action button that can be programmed to basically do whatever it is you want to do. On the bottom we have the charging ability, whether it's USB-C or to use one of our charging bases. And then on the back we have the actual battery. We have a fingerprint, optional fingerprint. We have the rear camera. We have a rear microphone, we have flash lens, we also have a front camera here, we have speakers. So let's take a look at the 840. And the main difference from a button perspective is that this button is the push to talk, but there's no power button on the side. The power button is located right here. Also, this particular model has the scanner built in. You can order the 840 or the 860 with or without the scanner. So that's what we're seeing right here at the top. And on the left, we have the volume up, volume down. And then we have the action button, which will be the scanner button for models that have the scanner enabled. And then on the bottom, we have the 3.5 millimeter jack and we have the power options. In this next demonstration, we will show how to do the battery swap while the device is still powered on. So what I'm going to do is flip the device around and then I'll simply just take the battery out. And if we take a look at this, the device is still online and it is still usable. So I'll go ahead and put the new battery back in. And as you can see, we have just swapped the battery out and we have not lost any connectivity. This is a brief overview of the user experience. So as you can see, this is running Android 10. Now this is not Android that you download from Google. This is Android that is essentially pushed down from UC Manager. So we have customized this. So one thing we have is a dialer. So this icon here is the actual uh, Cisco phone app that is built into the device. Some other applications that are built into the device are WebEx. So you can see down there, WebEx is available. We also have a few other apps here, such as the emergency app, the ability to customize the buttons, uh, Web API, push to talk, system updater, etc. So just be mindful that you'll, you'll see that these custom apps that we have deployed are there. And then of course we have the Google apps. Now if you don't want all of these built-in Google apps then you can use a MDM to block all of that and we'll discuss that later. So one thing we need to do is to make sure that we can place calls with the device. So it can be automatically configured using DHCP option 150 or upon the first time setup, we can go into the phone app and click settings and then manually configure it ourselves. So what we're going to do is go to security and enter a code that is 
pretty easy but not necessarily intuitive for an end user which will be star star pound and then click OK and then that will by default unlock the settings. Then I can turn the alternate TFTP to on and then I'll enter my TFTP address. So I'll go ahead and enter that now. I'll click OK and now it will register to UC Manager. So let's give it a second. It says SIP registration in progress. And now it has registered. So we can see my directory number at the top. We can also see that it has said UCM SIP registered. So if I click up here in the top left, we can see that there's various things that we can see. There's the admin settings, there's user settings. So the end user can turn off, you know, vibrate before ring and various other settings here. Uh, we can also go to additional features such as speed dial, call forward, applications, report a problem, and then we can check the actual phone status. Uh, we see we have a device information here, etc. Signing into the device is very easy. I simply would swipe up. So after a while, it's going to time out, and I simply push this button on the side here, and then I swipe up. So swiping up is very easy, whether I'm using my hand or whether I have a glove in my hand. And you can pin protect this if you wish, or you can have it non-pin protected. But as you can see, it's very easy to sign in. In this demonstration, we're going to demonstrate how to use push to talk. So on the side here is the button on the top right. I simply hold this button, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, and that will send out the push to talk to all the receiving nodes. And in terms of what it looks like if it's just sitting passively and it's going to receive a push to talk, I'll go ahead and push this button, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. So you can see that it's receiving a push to talk right now. So this device has essentially a emergency button, um, also known as a panic button, but it also has the ability to use sensors to detect when a man is down, so to speak, or when the tilt sensor goes off. So as you can see, I put it onto the table, and within just a few seconds, it's already issuing a warning. So this warning is indicating that there is a problem because, you know, the device is, is laying horizontal, but again, you can adjust the tilt sensitivity and you can see it's now sending out an alarm. In this demonstration, we will show the device with the barcode scanner. You can see that there's a scanner built into it and we're going to hold it about 12 inches from some medication here that I'll set on the table and I'll go ahead and scan this and you can see that it's scanning it. We'll go ahead and recreate this demonstration and hold it at a slightly longer distance. So I'll scan that. You can see that we're at least one foot away, if not more. In this short demonstration, I will use voice activation or voice recognition to search the directory for an app that I pulled up. So I'll just hold this down, David. And you can see here it has searched the directory for David and I can change my localization settings to prefer other languages. In this short video, we're gonna demonstrate group chat. Now we're using the WebEx application, but you can use any application that supports group chat. So as you can see, I can send messages here. Um, I just sent a message into this space. We can see all the people that are in this space and I can easily add someone. So I will add Macon from our organization and I've just added her now. And 
now we'll go ahead and now that she's been added here, we can go back and send everyone in this space a message and see read receipts, etc. So that's just a very brief demonstration of group chat. Some other accessories for this device uh, that make it easier to carry around is a belt clip. You can use a belt clip to easily clip on and carry it around. We also have a scanner gun accessory that you can easily put the device into this to make it easier to scan. And then we also have some chargers, so a single charger as well as a multi-charger. Now we will perform a drop test on a hard floor. And you can see the device is still in good condition and can still be used and is still operational. Google provides a service that allows me to find my device. So it can use location data, device information, etc. And I'll go ahead and accept this. And here we can see that it is trying right now to contact the device. And you can see that it can lock the device and sign out the Google account. It can even erase the device. And this is not a Cisco specific. This is just because the device runs Android. So as you can see right now, it is trying to contact the device. And we can see that it actually has found the device. So this is actually the Cisco Seattle office that it has pinpointed here. And I can actually drill down into that. And you can see it, it found me within the building. You could also use Cisco Meraki Systems Manager, or you can use a third party MDM like AirWatch or whichever MDM you choose. And in this example, you can see it has functionality to pinpoint my location. It can also show me the charge. It can also provide other functionality such as erase the device lock the device, clear the passcode, um, and it provides a wealth of information in terms of what's actually going on on the device. Let's take a look at the alerts that are in the Meraki Systems Manager as well as how to configure that. So if I go to Systems Manager Configure Alerts, I have the ability to create a policy that fits my requirements so if I if there's a violation if a configuration setting is changed or I can add a report so I can schedule this on a monthly basis or even daily basis and I can apply various tags so there's a lot that I can do here in terms of crafting a unique custom report and our documentation goes through all of the various alerts software alerts connectivity alerts geofencing alerts enrollment alerts uh, mobile device management settings so there is a lot of customization that you can do let's take a look at how to generate reports so if we go back to the devices here are the devices in my inventory and I can generate a CSV file and that CSV file will actually provide me the ability to look at the names, the model numbers, uh, various tags, which operating system it is running, when it was connected, uh, the percent of disk used, etc. So this is how you would generate a report using the Meraki Systems Manager. So the first thing we want to do is add our devices. So I've already applied my license so I can go ahead and add my Android device. And here is where it can be tricky. We actually want to do a device owner mode. We do not want to do a work profile. So we want to have the WebEx wireless phone be an in device owner mode. And to do that, 
we actually would just scan this QR code with the WebEx wireless phone. Now, the important thing is that we have to factory reset our WebEx wireless phone if we have not already done so. So let's take a look at how we do this on the WebEx wireless phone. So I have factory reset my WebEx wireless phone 860 in order to prepare it to go ahead and onboard it. And now I'm going to tap it six times in order to take it to the QR screen. So I'm gonna pick up my phone and scan it by pointing it to the QR code of my laptop. And now it, it is now prompting me to enter a wireless network. So I'll go ahead and configure my wireless network. Now that I've connected to Wi-Fi, it now tells me that my device belongs to the organization. I click Next and then it asks me a few simple setup steps before it completely onboards it into the Meraki SM. And this is the Meraki splash screen and we essentially just select enable for anything that we see here. So I'll select enable for that and I will permit the Meraki SM and after that we should be done. The Meraki SM is now allowed. And that should be all that is required in order to enable it. So let's just give it a second here. And we are essentially done. In this short demonstration, we are going to use the Meraki SM to block all applications and explicitly allow the Cisco phone app. So we're going to start with cisco.com phone. This will allow the dialer on the actual device to be viewable and usable. UCM client goes along with that. This logging will provide additional serviceability. The same goes with the app URL in order for it to function correctly and the port manager and then last but not least we need to have the google android input method latin and we need this so that when i interact with the settings application that it actually has a pop-up keyboard to allow me to input things like the ip address of uc manager so let's go ahead and add all this and then we click save. And then this will get pushed down to the actual device. It may take one or two minutes as it says here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now that I have applied the policy, I can see that the Cisco phone app has appeared and I can easily drag this onto the desktop. In this demonstration, we will show how to permit an application and restrict all other applications on the device. We're going to use Meraki to do this, but you could use a third party MDM to do this as well. So we're going to permit just the WebEx app, just as an example. So for this allow list, I'm going to do com.cisco.wx2.android. That's the actual WebEx app. This app is actually pre-installed on the device but I want to remove everything else on the device. And then com.google.android.inputmethod.latin. We're going to allow that because that is the interactive keyboard that is used with this application so that we can do things like sign in and send chat messages. So it's only these two things. I click submit. That'll get pushed down to the device and everything else is blocked. In this demonstration, we are going to use hydrogen peroxide to basically clean the device. So what I will do is open this up, pour a little bit into here, and then I will put it onto the screen. So we support hydrogen peroxide 3%. So as you can see, not an issue and it will not leave any residue on the device. 
In this next demonstration, we will show that the device can easily be used with medical gloves. So here I am swiping to the left and to the right, and I can easily pull up settings, I can pull up my Chrome browser, I can easily open icons. So as you can see, there is no issues interacting with this device using gloves. So the device can be easily held and will not slip out of your hands. So the device actually has a texture to it, and this texture allows me to basically not have to grip it very tightly. So it's very comfortable to use and feels good in the palm of my hand, easy to use. Let's now walk through the Bluetooth pairing process. So basically I can navigate through the UI and go to settings and then here I can simply type in Bluetooth to search the settings. So I'll select Bluetooth and then I'll choose pair device. And I have a Bluetooth headset here so I'll put it into pairing mode. And there is my Cisco headset. And I'll choose pair. And now I've paired the headset. In this demonstration, we will show how to back up the device. So I basically go into settings and then I can just search for backup. So this is the backup settings. This will allow me to back up everything to Google Drive, such as the apps, apps data, the device settings, etc. So I'll go ahead and select this. Now I will add this account to be backed up. So I'll select OK, and then I can select Backup Now. And it is currently backing up the data.